free. I'm working to triple the income of 100 small acreage farmers, which means that we would move 500 to 700 people from abject poverty to Haitian middle class, all with the goal of strengthening families, to strengthen the local church, to strengthen communities for the glory of God. By serving in Haiti, I'm serving in a broken place. There is limited employment opportunities for people. Monetary value fluctuations are excessive. In fact, recently, the dollar lost 50% of its value, has not recovered any of that, and it happened in one day. It's just crazy being there. There's droughts. Uh, the national electric grid is sporadic and unpredictable. Ruined crops, hope, which ruins the hopes of small acreage farmers. Riots, recent development of gangs. The country, including schools, shut down because of the violence. And some of the riots are the police that are rioting, if you can imagine. And then there's the ongoing corruption. Most expat ministries are suspended or they're just being run with skeleton crews. And over 95% of short-term missionaries are not being in the country. And that's been for over two years, which means 80 to 100,000 people a year, which bring a lot of aid and a lot of help as they come, are not there. Haiti politics are crazy. Right now, there is no legislature. The only thing they have is a president who leads now by decree. And 2021 is supposed to be a presidential election year, and there are violent and large riots all across the country for a year before and a year after the election. I want to give one example of how the violence has affected us. A partner ministry has put up 96 shade houses in Haiti. Two years ago, we were next in line for one. All the arrangements had been made and they were within a month of coming. And then the violence started and it continued. And they have not built one of these shade houses in our area or any place in the country south of us. And they have no plans on returning. We've continued to talk and they recently developed a kit for building the house. And we would be the second ministry to test build uh, the kit. So we're looking forward to having uh, the house because we can have higher value crops and more variety since many crops do not do well in the extreme sun and extreme heat in Haiti. Just a bit of an update, one year ago, I shared with you all, and you generously came alongside some of our projects. We were able to build, uh, to buy sice, you know, those uh, grass cutting things. We were able to buy sice and accessories to manually cut and bale hay. You can see a picture of our first bale from our first manual uh, hay baler, and we're doing that in three different geographical uh, areas in Haiti. Last year, we hoped to raise enough money to create 40 food kits, with each feeding a family of five for a week. We ended up being able to quadruple that because of your generosity. We created 4,000 meals that were distributed by local Haitian churches in three different areas. The food was bought in Haiti. It was packed by Haitian students. Recipients were identified by church leaders and uh, community leaders. And one, uh, one of those areas was an entire uh, mountain remote village. It went flawlessly, and the local churches got the credit, and the recipients never saw a blanc or foreigner. The pastors are so grateful for your help in helping them to help their community. Today, I have just a bit of a need. I have a BUV, this basic utility vehicle, uh, ready to send to Haiti. It gets 70 miles to a gallon, has a diesel motor, uses less than a tenth of the parts of the typical truck, which is fantastic. You can imagine the difficulty in trying to keep vehicles running and importing parts for different things. And it can carry 1,000 pounds. So far, auto transporters have not been willing to come pick it up for a trip to Miami so that we can put it on a ship. So we need a bit of a breakthrough or access to a car, tra a car trailer uh, to take it to Miami for ourselves. So if you have any ideas, if you have one of these car trailers sitting by your pole barn, uh, or know of anything, or any way that you might be able to help, would appreciate talking with you. I'm gonna be out at the Welcome Center uh, afterwards. So to wrap it up, I just wanna thank you so much, so much 
for your support. Please pray for Haiti as the country's broken. Pray for Haitians as life is hard. And pray for us. And if you'd like to be on our mailing list, again, I'll be out by the Welcome Center. I'd be happy to talk with you and, and sign you up. The good news is that in spite of all that is wrong with the country, crops still grow. Bees still make honey. Goats still kid. Worms still make compost. Chickens still lay eggs. All of these things were new to the young people that we're training. And they've done a great job. COVID and all these problems have given us a wonderful opportunity to firm up all the different things that we have started and are developing. Galatians says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. It's good to hear about